welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a story time. I have not done a story time here on my channel probably since last year. I think I did my last story time around Vlogmas. That's probably when I did my last story time and I've only done two here on my channel. And the two story times that I did previously, a lot of you guys really enjoyed it and really wanted me to do more. I just never brought them back. So I thought, why not bring them back to my channel? So today is going to be my labor and delivery story. Now I've never shared my labor and delivery story with you guys just because every time I see any of these stories, it's always by moms who have newborns or infants and my kids are older. My kids are ages four and five. And although they are older, four and five, I still want to share with you guys my experience from my labor and delivery story because with my kids, my first delivery was smoothly and my second delivery was very, very traumatic. So I thought, why not share with you guys in a story time? So now let's just jump right into my labor and delivery story. Now, I don't know if you guys already know this, but both of my deliveries were by a C-section. I had a C-section for both of my kids. Now, my C-section with my son went smoothly. It was amazing. From my C-section surgery to my recovery, everything went smoothly. Everything went wonderful. Now, my C-section with my daughter was a completely different story. It was the most traumatic experience I've ever been through. Now, there was complications starting from the beginning. I had to get an epidural and they were having complications giving me my epidural. I have scoliosis and my scoliosis is pretty bad. So because of my scoliosis being so bad, they were having a lot of complications trying to get my epidural. They ended up having to call in a second doctor to come assist in giving me my epidural. That is how much complications they were having with giving me my epidural. I was already nervous about getting this epidural because one, I do not like needles. I hate needles. And if any of you guys have ever gotten an epidural or you know anything about epidurals, you do know that they are dangerous. If they do it the incorrect way, you can be paralyzed. So just getting the epidural from the beginning, I was already really nervous because like I said, I don't like noodles. And two, I was scared that something was gonna go wrong and then I was going to be paralyzed for the rest of my life. And then when they had to call in that second doctor to help with my epidural, and that just made my anxiety level go up even higher. But luckily they were able to give me my epidural after a really long time of them trying. Now everything was going smoothly all the way up until they pulled me into the surgery room. As soon as they started cutting me open for my C-section, I all of a sudden started feeling the most excruciating, sharp pain. Now, I've never been stabbed before, so I don't know how it feels to be stabbed, but honestly, I feel like that's the only thing I can compare it to of how much pain I was feeling. I just felt like somebody was stabbing me, and I started screaming, and I was crying. And I was going through all of this without my husband. We had just moved to Georgia. We did not have any family or any friends to watch Ryan while I was in surgery. So my husband was in the waiting area waiting for my surgery to be over with Ryan. So during all of this, I was alone. Now, when I started screaming and crying, they obviously stopped and asked me what was wrong. And I told them that I was feeling a very, very sharp, excruciating pain down in my abdominal area. Now they asked me if I was able to move my legs or move my feet and I obviously was not able to move my legs or my feet. But when they asked me if I was able to move my toes, I was able to wiggle my toes a little bit. I didn't have complete movement of them, but I was able to wiggle them enough for them to see that I had movement in my toes. And when you are in the middle of a C-section surgery, you're not supposed to be able to feel anything from your waist down. You're not supposed to be able to move your feet, move your legs, move any part of your body. The fact that I was able to move my toes meant that my epidural did not go through completely. The only thing I can compare my feet to how they were feeling to you guys is when your foot falls asleep and it starts waking up and you get those like tingling needle sensations. That's what my toes were feeling like. So I told the doctor and I told everyone else in the room that that is what I was feeling. And they told me that they were going to have to put me to sleep because my epidural did not go through completely. And obviously they cannot go through surgery with me not being 100% numb. So then I started freaking out even more because like I said, I am alone in this room while all of this is going on. I have never been put to sleep. This was going to be the first time that I have ever been put to sleep. And the fact that it was under these circumstances wasn't making my anxiety level any better. So they had to put me to sleep. 
which took a while because they had to call somebody else in so they can give me the anesthesia and put me to sleep. Then I was put to sleep and when I wake up, I'm already in recovery and my daughter was already born. She was cleaned up and she was wrapped in a blanket while my husband was holding her. My husband said that after they pulled me back into the recovery room that I did sleep for an additional 15 minutes. So I did not get to see my daughter for the first time until 15 to 20 minutes after she was born. Like I said, she was already cleaned up and already wrapped in a blanket and I was an emotional wreck. As you guys can imagine from everything that I had just been through to all my hormones going crazy, I was very emotional and I was really upset that I did not get that one-on-one -on -one experience with my daughter right when she was born. When my son was born, I got that one-on-one -on -one experience right when he was born and they pulled him out of my stomach. They laid him on my chest for a minute so I was able to see him and smell him and touch him and kiss him and then they cleaned him up. My daughter, I did not get that. She was already cleaned up and wrapped up the first time that I saw her so I was really upset about that part as well. And then comes recovery. With my son, my recovery went smoothly and I honestly didn't need any pain medication after I got home. I think the only time I took pain medication with my son's surgery was while I was at the hospital. I did have to take medication while I was at the hospital for the pain, but once I got home, I was completely fine. I did not need any type of pain medication. And with my daughter, I was in so much pain. One, I ended up having to stay in the hospital longer than what I did with my son. And two, after I got home, the recovery was horrible. I was in so much pain. It would hurt just to laugh. It would hurt to sneeze. It would hurt to do anything. I could barely even move. And thankfully, my sister was able to fly out to Georgia for a week to help me out with Ryan and Madison because my husband was only able to get off a certain amount of time. So thank goodness my sister was able to come and help me out because I could barely move and get out of the bed. Just to get out of the bed, I would need assistance getting up and out of the bed. I would need assistance taking a shower. I would need assistance using the toilet. So it was a very, very hard recovery for me. It took me a really long time to recover from my daughter's C-section. Now, I did get my tubes tied, and I do not know if that played a factor in how much pain I was feeling and why it took me so much longer to recover from this C-section. If any of you guys have ever gotten your tubes tied, comment down below and let me know if you guys felt any pain and how the recovery was for that, because like I said, I don't know if you feel a lot of pain from getting your tubes tied, so that could have been why it took me so much longer to recover and why I felt like the pain was 10 times worse than with my son. But yeah, I did get my tubes tied. So like I said, that could have played a factor in while I was in so much pain. So yeah, that is my C-section story with both of my kids. Like I said, with my son, it was a breeze. And with my daughter, it was very traumatizing. And honestly, to tell you guys the truth, if this would have happened the first time around, I probably would not have had any more kids just because it was that traumatizing for me and that much painful. So I'm really grateful and thankful that it happened the second time around and not the first time around. Because since I was young, I always knew I wanted at least two kids. And me and my husband said two to three kids. We agreed that if we had one boy, one girl, then we would stop. If not, we would try a third time for either that boy or girl. But since we have our boy and a girl, then we decided just to stop there. And so like I said, if this would have happened the first time around, then I probably would not have had any more kids. So really glad that this happened the second time around. So yeah, that is my C-section story. Please comment down below and let me know if you guys would like me to bring back story time to my channel. And maybe I could start doing them like once a month and I will change it up every once in a while. I'll tell you guys stories of happy times. I'll tell you guys stories of sad times and tough times in my life. So just comment down below and let me know if you like story times and if you guys would like me to start doing them once a month and then I would start bringing them back to my channel. So as always, thank you so much for watching and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified anytime I upload a video and also give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time. Bye.